for tuning in again. I'm Melissa and this is Flourish in Faith and today we're going to be talking about what makes Christianity different from all the other religions and what makes Christianity actually true. So before we dive into that make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my latest videos. So um, without further ado let's get on with today's video. So I'm not going to waste any time in this video because I have a lot to cover and a lot of info to give you guys because I did tons of research on this one because I wanted to make sure that I brought all the information or the most I could to the table. First off, I'm going to mention some things that all religions have in common just so we have a base and we have a known factor. One, all religions believe in a higher power, whether it is God or a different God or like the universe or something like that, they believe that there is a higher power. Two, every religion believes that there is a moral law, whether that is being a good person, being kind, or following God, or following really strict rules. Um, yeah, they all got the moral law, which means basically there is an idea of what is good and what is bad. And three, the higher power holds the moral law, and if you break it, or do something against it, then you are violating against the higher power, if that makes sense. So those are the three things that all religions really hold. And atheism is sort of this thing that's outside of religions, because atheism is not a religion. It is actually the belief in nothing. The belief that there is no higher power at all. And in order to be a religion, you have to be part of those three things. There are definitely like main big ones, and Christianity is the big one, is the biggest one in the world. Then there's Islam, there's Hinduism, and Buddhism. There are so many other religions, but I just focused on these ones because they were the biggest, the most prom predominant, predominant in the world. And so I sort of did some research to sort of understand that. What makes Christianity different from all of them? I mean, all of them are different from each other. But what makes Christianity step out of, like, just being one of the normal religions? And I'm also here to tell you what makes Christianity actually the true one. Because I believe that Christianity is the true one. And I'm not being biased. Because if you really think about it, because I know Christianity is true, then I became a Christian. And also some of you might be saying to yourself, well actually I believe all religions are true and it's actually just your own self that you need to find your truth. Well here's the thing with that, um, they all contradict each other. It cannot all be true. There has to be one actual true one that's telling the truth. So we're here to find this out today. So the first point I want to make in showing how Christianity is different and how it makes it true um, against all the other religions is that one, Jesus says he is the only way. Now this might be like, okay, yeah, what do I care if your Jesus says that he is the only way? Well, because I did some really cool research and this is really interesting. As I was researching the other three religions besides Christianity, I noticed that the leaders of those three religions actually said in their days that you're supposed to search for the truth. That you are supposed to look and find the truth. They never actually said that I am the way and I am the truth. But in Christianity, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one shall come to the Father except through me. So that, that's what he said in John 14, 6. And Christians do not go around, like including myself, we do not go around saying, uh, oh, Jesus is the only way, Jesus is the only way because we're arrogant, narrow-minded, or judgmental. If you had a cure for cancer, you wouldn't hide it and be like, oh, I don't want to be, I don't want to seem narrow-minded. You want to share it with the world because you want to be like, everyone, I know what it is. So... That's sort of what's going on there. Jesus is unique. He is either a mad, insane, crazy liar, or he is actually telling the truth, and he is the only way. But since almost everyone agrees that Jesus is a good guy, and he was actually like a good person, he had to be telling the truth. He is the only way. Now that was only one point. Now if that doesn't have you quite convi convinced. If that doesn't have you quite convinced yet, I encourage you to keep watching. All right, so now to explain the miracles, like the miracles that Jesus did while he was on earth. If you know the story about how Jesus took the three fish and the five loaves of bread and fed 5,000 plus people, 
with that and had extra over, then you can see that he has these like some magical powers. This cannot be mass hysteria or even even someone just lying, telling this fake story, because there are so many accounts of this written in the Bible. And people were even willing to die for what they saw. Would you die for something that you weren't that sure you really saw? No, you would know for a fact you saw it. You would know with your whole heart that this thing is real, and so you're dying for it. The calming of the sea when there was the storm and he was in the boat and everyone was saying, like, help us. And Jesus also rose from the dead. Like, there's so many accounts of him even being seen after his death. And scientists prove that Jesus had to have died according to the spear that was thrown into his lung and water came out. That was a sure sign that he was dead or dying. And to contrast this against other religions, Buddha didn't raise from the dead. In fact, he is still dead, and nor did Confucius, and Muhammad didn't fulfill any detailed prophecies. Even though those have less reliable sources and less reliable information, and less information, people are still willing to believe in those. But that's what sets Christianity apart, because Christianity actually has the facts and has so much to back it up. You can test and test and test the Bible, and it will never fail you. So on to this next part, my third point, which is mathematical probabilities of the prophecies being fulfilled. So here we go. I found this information from a wonderful source, and I'll link it below so you guys can go check it out, see for yourself. The following probabilities are taken from Peter Stoner. I'm about to prove how it is basically impossible what Jesus did, yet he did it. So let's let's read into this. Okay, so if you guys don't know, there were eight major prophecies about the Son of Man coming. And so the probabilities of a man actually fulfilling each one of those eight prophecies is 1 in 10 to the 17th power. Now, if you guys don't know, that is an insane number. 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, Chances. <laughs> in order to comprehend this insane number, Stoner makes this incredible illustration that if we take 10 to the 17th silver dollars and lay them on the face of Texas, they will cover all of the state two feet deep. Now mark one of those silver dollars randomly and stir the whole mass thoroughly all over the state. Blindfold a man and tell him that he can travel as far as he wishes but he must pick up one silver dollar and says that it is the right one. What chance would he have of getting the right one? Just the same chances of any man fulfilling those eight prophecies. That is wild. And to think that Jesus did it. Jesus fulfilled all eight prophecies. Wait till you see this. I'm not over. It's not over yet. As you guys know, that there were not just eight prophecies. Just the eight prophecies were really big. You can look up what the eight prophecies were. But there were so many more prophecies, but they were littler and less significant. So let's look into those. So Stoner considers 48 prophecies and says, We find the chance that any one man fulfilled all 48 prophecies to be 1 in 10 to the 157th power. <laughs> Or one in one zero 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 zero. Okay, I'm not gonna read all them zeros. Um, so it's a lot of zeros. I'll just show you on the screen. And the estimated number of electrons in the universe is around ten to the seventy ninth power. So the chances of Jesus fulfilling all forty eight prophecies is literally more rare than the amount of electrons in the universe. If he fulfilled all of these things by this insane odds, I am inclined to believe that he is right when he says that he is the only way and that he, that he is the one they've always been talking about when they said the Son of God is coming. And so I don't know about you guys, but those other religions they don't seem very promising anymore. The next part that I want to bring up to you guys is that there are no contradictions in the Bible. So there are a lot of interesting parts in the Bible that seem to not make sense or seem to even contradict themselves. But I went to like the national list of proposed Bible 
oppositions and contradictions. And I went through as many as I could in the time I had, and I found a reason for each one, and it still panned out that the Bible was telling the truth the whole time, no contradictions. So if the Bible is like all inerrant and true and no contradictions at all, that seems that the Bible is very special. Not to mention that the other um, Bibles, such as like the Quran, like the Islam Bible, um, that has contradictions. Seriously, the Bible can be tested and tested, and there's so many accounts of people seeing things and believing and feeling things and having their lives changed. Bible in general being the accurate documentation of names and age and children and storylines and like specific numbers of who was in a tribe or who went to war and who like their tribe names, who was the king. Like it is such an accurate documentation. If you looked into a history book, would you like, mm, I don't know if that's true. I don't know, I don't know if that's true. Because the Bible is technically like a history book. It tells you a storyline of what happened, who fought in wars, all that stuff. But it also shares the amazingness of Jesus. In the Bible, it would explain things that people didn't quite understand, such as when the moon turned blood red, when Jesus died. That is scientifically proven to be a lunar eclipse. And so that is just incredible. Like, people back then, they didn't understand. When the stars aligned, they said that they saw this star over where Jesus was born. They have been able to prove what that was scientifically and been able to mark down what time Jesus was born because of when those stars aligned together. And that is just so incredible. And lastly, the last thing I want to explain to you guys, what makes Christianity different from all the other religions is the relationship that you can have. All the other religions, basically their base is to be a good person or to do good things like your works are what get you good things or to go to heaven. But with Christianity, it is a relationship between God and you. The fact that the Creator came down and died on the cross for you because He loves you that much. And all you, can, all you need to do is believe in Him and repent of your sins, which means turn away and try to do better. That's what makes Christianity different from these other religions because the other religions are based off of works. But Christianity specifically spells out that it is not about works. It is about love. And that is what sold me. So that is why I'm a Christian. And that is why I believe that Christianity is different from all the other religions. And it is the true and only religion out there. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my latest videos. Also, if you enjoyed this video or if you had any comments or questions, I would be happy to answer you guys down in the comment section below. I'm just trying to share this amazing news with you guys that Jesus is real. God is real. We get to be a part of this incredible story um, of love and this amazingness. Thank you guys so much. Bye!